हेलो गाइस आज हम डिस्कस करने जा रहे हैं माइट्रल रिगर्जिटेशन माइट्रल रिगर्जिटेशन इज बेसिकली द लीकेज ऑफ ब्लड फ्रॉम द लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल टू द लेफ्ट एट्रियम ड्यू टू द ड्यू टू द वीकनिंग और ड्यू टू द डिफेक्टिव कॉपटेशन ऑफ माइट्रल वॉल्स लीफलेट ओके सो ड्यूरिंग द लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकुलर कंट्रेक्शन देयर इज द माइट्रल वॉल मेंटेन इट्स पोजिशन द माइट्रल वॉल मेंटेन इट्स पोजिशन ड्यू टू कॉडा टेंडनी विच आर स्ट्रिंग्स लाइक स्ट्रक्चर एंड द पेपिलरी मसल्स ओके बट ड्यू टू द वीकनिंग ऑफ दिस कॉडा टेंडनी एंड पेपिलरी मसल्स आर आइदर आर मे बी देयर विल बी सम इंट्रेंसिक वीकनिंग आर इंट्रेंसिक डेमेज इन द माइट्रल वॉल लिफलेट्स then uh, as a result the mitral wall weakens and there there is defective cooptation of uh, mitral walls which causes the leakage of blood during left ventricular uh, systole um, uh, from the left uh, ventricle to the left atrium okay so इसमें क्या होता है इसमें लीकेज ऑफ ब्लड होता है लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल से लेफ्ट एट्रियम से और लेफ्ट एट्रियम में इस लीकेज की वजह से स्ट्रक्चरल डैमेज भी हो सकता है इसके वजह से ब्लड एकमुलेट होता है लंग्स में भी ठीक है पलमुनरी एडेमा भी हो सकता है सही है तो माइट्रल रिगर्जिटेशन इज बेसिकली ड्यू टू द डैमेज ऑफ कॉडा टेंडनी एंड इट इज मोस्टली इन एसोसिएशन विद माइट्रल वॉल प्रोलेब्स और वी कैन से माइट्रल वॉल प्रोलेब्स कैन कास माइट्रल रिगर्जिटेशन ओके एंड इट इज ड्यू टू माइट्रल वॉल रिगर्जिटेशन इज ड्यू टू डिफेक्टिव कॉपटेशन ऑफ वॉल्स विच कास द माइट्रल रिगर्जिटेशन या आर द लीकेज ऑफ ब्लड ओके डिफेक्टिव कॉपटेशन ऑफ वॉल कास इज माइट्रल रिगर्जिटेशन एंड इट कास इज द लीकेज ऑफ ब्लड फ्राम लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल टू द लेफ्ट एट्रियम ओके डिफेक्टिव द मेन प्रॉब्लम इज डिफेक्टिव कॉपटेशन एंड this mitral regurgitation causes the systolic murmurs but uh, we will uh, we will be discussing uh, that uh, uh, what will be the correct characteristic murmur of acute mitral regurgitation and chronic mitral regurgitation but first we will discuss the causes of mitral regurgitation the causes of acute mitral regurgitation acute mitral regurgitation are first cause is the main cause is infective endocarditis in the infective endocarditis the inf- uh, the infectious uh, process causes the weakening of uh, this um, cauda tendini okay and uh, it will cause the defective cooptation of um, walls and as a result causes the mitral regurgitation the second cause is papillary muscle damage and you will know that papillary muscle damage mostly most commonly occur in mi myocardial infarction okay the third cause is mvp mitral wall prolapse mitral wall in the mitral wall prolapse there is myxomatous degeneration of the valve leaflets which causes the mitral regurgitation okay the fourth cause is blunt trauma and uh, the the blunt trauma to the heart is called com- commotio ya yeah, or commo- commotio cardes okay commotio cardes and it causes sudden death of the individual okay the chronic mr now the causes of chronic mr chronic mitral regurgitation is mvp mvp both causes acute and uh, chronic mr so first cause is mvp mitral wall prolapse rheumatic heart diseases okay so rheumatic heart diseases also called uh, also cause uh, mitral regurgitation okay uh, rheumatic uh, heart disease causes scarring of the valve leaflets which lead to mitral uh, regurgitation uh, sub uh, sub acute bacterial endocarditis also causes chronic mitral regurgitation and the congenital cause uh, which is cleft mitral wall also lead to the condition uh, chronic mitral uh, regurgitation now we will discuss that chronic mitral regurgitation will be either primary or secondary mitral regurgitation okay primary by primary word we mean uh, here that uh, it will be the uh, due to intrinsic damage of valve leaflets and the cause will be either uh, endocarditis it will be um, either um, mvp mitral wall prolapse or radiation or uh, any congenital causes okay the secondary uh, mitral regurgitation uh, uh, is due to functional causes there will be annul- annular dilatation of uh, annular dilatation which causes the mitral regurgitation okay uh, d- it will may be due to d- dcm dilated cardiomyopathy intrinsic cardiomyopathy or hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy so the, the, these are the causes of uh, acute and chronic mitral regurgitation now what is the difference between acute mitral regurgitation or uh, uh, versus uh, chronic mitral regurgitation so you can see that when there is acute leakage of uh, blood from left ventricle to left atrium so it will uh, acutely it will not affect the heart size so the heart size in the acute mitral regurgitation will be normal normal heart size but in the chronic uh, mitral regurgitation it will 
it will cause uh, the large um, left atrial size okay so left heart size are uh, it will cause the heart size to be enlarged now the left atrium will be in the acute mr the left atrium will be normal in size but in the chronic mr chronic myocardial infarction there is a compensatory changes uh, in the left atrium due to uh, high volume uh, overload okay so there will be enlarged left atrium normal left atrium enlarged left atrium now in the acute mr is there is sudden or uh, um, uh, leakage of blood from left ventricle to left uh, atrium so the uh, there will be backflow of blood from the left atrium to the lungs which causes the pulmonary edema okay so often the acute uh, the death from the acute myocardial uh, regurgitation is due to pulmonary edema sul uh, sudden pulmonary edema while pulmonary edema will either be present or absent in chronic myocardial infarction and the murmur which which is present in the acute myocardial uh, regurgitation there will be early systolic murmur but in the chronic myocardial uh, regurgitation there will be pain systolic murmur as you can see that uh, there are two heart sound s1 and s2 this is uh, systolic uh, phase okay in between the s1 and s2 there is systolic phase so in the uh, uh, in this acute myocardial infarction there is only acu uh, early systolic murmur okay but in the chronic uh, myocardial uh, regurgitation there will be pain systolic murmur okay so this is uh, these are the differences uh, between acute myocardial regurgitation and chronic myocardial regurgitation now we will move on to the uh, examination uh, points of micro mitral regurgitation and the other uh, discussion about the mitral regurgitation okay okay so now we will uh, move on to the um, examination points of the mitral regurgitation so on examination the bp will be normal and if we will uh, if we look uh, for thrill uh, so uh, we will uh, be, uh, we will uh, palpate uh, in the mitral regurgi regurgitation the thrill will be at the apex okay uh, and the thrill is uh, any palpable uh, murmur the palpable murmur murmur is called thrill okay and the apex beat, uh, the character of uh, apex beat will be hyperdynamic character, and there will, uh, on examination, the dis uh, displace displacement of apex beat can also be seen. And uh, what will be the uh, on auscultation? So on the auscultation, the S1 sound, uh, the S1 or first heart sound will be soft, and the S2 uh, heart sound, as there is uh, two. Um, uh, two um, parts of uh, uh, of our uh, two sources of uh, second heart sound a2 and p2 okay a a2 is due to uh, closure of aortic wall you can see here in this uh, schematic diagram that there is uh, left atrium left ventricle right atrium right ventricle okay and this is the aorta um, uh, and this is the pulmonary uh, artery okay so this is the aortic valve this is the pulmonary valve um, uh, or uh, this is the pulmonic valve this is the mitral and this is tricuspid okay uh, so uh, you can see that in the mitral regurgitation there is leakage of blood uh, from the left ventricle to the uh, left atrium and the blood uh, the blood which will be pumped out from the left ventricle uh, through the aorta uh, uh, is less okay why uh, there is less uh, blood as compared to normal uh, pumping of uh, left ventricle because in the mitral regurgitation some of the blood leak from the uh, left ventricle to the left atrium so the blood which have to be pumped out is uh, relatively uh, less okay so the less blood will need less time okay so what norm what normally hap happen that first a2 wall is closed and then p2 valve is closed okay but in this scenario in the mitral regurgitation scenario the a2 will close earlier okay the a2 will close earlier because there is less blood in the mitral regurgitation uh, in this condition in the mitral regurgitation the uh, the volume of blood which will be pumped out is relatively lower than the normal scenario okay in the normal scenario all of the blood in the left ventricle goes through the uh, aorta but in the in this mitral regurgitation some of the blood leak out from the left ventricle to the left atrium so now the blood which will be which have to be pumped out is relatively lower than the normal scenario so the less blood will need less time okay so uh, in the uh, less time the blood will pump out and then the mitral sorry the aortic valve will close and the aortic and, and in this mitral regurgitation scenario the uh, aortic wall uh, will close earlier than normal so it will shift to the left side so there will be you can see there is uh, this this is the physiological splitting which is which is 30 millisecond 
but in the uh, aortic regurgitation uh, sorry in the mitral regurgitation there is uh, early uh, closure of aortic component aortic component of the uh, second heart sound so there will be early closure of the aortic valve and th uh, there will be as a result there will be you know, wide splitting wide splitting of s2 okay so on auscultatory uh, on auscultation there will be wide split s2 why because a2 appears early or a uh, aortic valve closes early okay then normal and uh, the s3 sound will also be uh, present in this uh, mitral regurgitation and this will be the diastolic uh, murmur okay so this is these are the auscultatory and uh, on examin uh, examination points of the mitral regurgit uh, regurgitation now we will move to the uh, lab findings or uh, we can say uh, what will be the investigations for mitral regurgitation okay so now we will move uh, to the investigation of our uh, mitral regurgitation Okay, so uh, before uh, going to investigation, we will discuss the clinical features of mitral regurgitation. So mitral regurgitation, um, uh, the clinical features are fatigue, the paroxysmal nocturnal uh, dyspnea, okay, orthopnea. So uh, these are uh, the points, um, uh, uh, these are the clinical features um, uh, which is caused by many uh, like um, uh, pathophysiology of mitral regurgitation. Uh, there will be... Uh, these are the symptoms of uh, our clinical features of uh, pulmonary edema, the right ventricular heart failure, uh, the low cardiac output, which is all due to mitral regurgitation. We can see uh, if it uh, if mitral regurgitation advances and it causes the left ventricular uh, heart failure or left ventricular um, heart uh, volume overload, so it will cause the hepatomegaly, the ankle edema, raised JVP, jugular venous pressure, and the palpitations. And you can um, you you will know that the palpitation is due to structural damage of left atrium, uh, as there is. Uh, left atrium volume overload due to leakage of blood from left ventricle to the left atrium and it causes the structural damage of left atrium and lead to atrial uh, fibrillation okay so these are the um, uh, clinical features of mitral regurgitation and what are the investigation what are the investigation of uh, um, what investigation we will uh, be doing for uh, mitral regurgitation so first we will do ecg and the ecg will uh, show the p mitrale p mitrale uh, is um, uh, there will be notch as you um, uh, can see that uh, there is p wave the qrs complex and there this is t wave but in the mitral regurgitation there will be the notch in the p wave this is called p mitrale and is the result of this notch the pr interval okay so this is the PR interval and the PR interval will will increase in the uh, uh, mitral regurgitation and it will be greater than 120 millisecond okay and on ECG we can also uh, see the left uh, axis deviation okay left axis deviation left axis deviation we can also do chest x-ray and uh, on the chest x-ray as there is uh, enlargement of the heart size in the mitral regurgitation so we can see uh, the mm, increased cardiothoracic ratio which will be greater than 0.5 or more than 50 percent and the walking main sign can also be seen and this is due to i will show the uh, pictures of this uh, walking main sign and this is due to left atrial enlargement okay left atrial enlargement and what is the investigation of chais so the investigation of chais is eco on eco and uh, on eco uh, we will um, uh, we will see that uh, the posteromedial leaflet of the mitral uh, wall is uh, most common involved uh, than anterior, anterior lateral leaflet why because uh, there is single blood supply of uh, posteromedial uh, leaflet so it is most vul vulnerable to ischemic changes okay so this is the investigation of choice now we will move on to the treatment of the mitral regurgitation Okay, so uh, the treatment options uh, for mitral regurgi regurg regurgitation uh, for acute MR, uh, the, the first option is furosemide and the second option is nitroprusside. As there is sudden uh, stress on heart due to uh, acute MR, so to prevent sudden stress on heart, uh, heart which lead to left ventricular uh, failure, we will um, use the sodium nitroprusside. Okay, so the nit furosemide and nitroprusside. While for uh, chronic myocardial um, regurgitation, uh, the first option is mitral wall uh, repa uh, repair, uh, which uh, can be done uh, through these uh, methods: uh, annuloplasty ring, neocards, and cord transfers. The second option for uh, chronic MR is mitral wall replacement, and the third option is uh, the new approach, which is called uh, transcatheter mitral valve clip okay so and um, uh, in the last we will discuss that uh, what uh, what uh, what will be the criteria for severe 
mitral regurgitation but uh, before uh, discussing the uh, uh, criteria for severe uh, for defining severe mitral regurgitation uh, we will i will tell you the uh, point which is called vena contracta okay vena contracta what is vena contracta okay so the vena contracta is the narrowest part with highest velocity of regurgitant jet of blood from left ventricle to the uh, left atrium okay so uh, i will discuss this with this diagram this for example there is this is the um, uh, uh, flow um, this is the wall valve or uh, this is the opening through which the blood is uh, will be moving and this is the uh, another opening so in which uh, um, uh, opening the uh, the uh, blood velocity or the uh, jet of blood will move at the highest velocity so obviously at the narrowest part okay so this is uh, vena contracta okay so in this part the blood velocity will be uh, s slow a while in this um, in this uh, opening or in this uh, valve the uh, velocity of the blood will be high highest so vena contracta is the narrowest part of the jet of blood with the highest velocity which moves from left ventricle to the left atrium it is vena contracta and it is it defines the severity of the mitral uh, regurgitation okay so it define or it show us the severity of mitral regurgitation so narrow uh, narrow will uh, narrow the opening uh, the uh, velocity will be the highest okay so the vena contracta is the narrowest part uh, uh, of the jet of blood we can define as it is narrowest part of jet of blood okay the narrowest part of jet of blood with highest velocity is called vena contracta with high highest with highest velocity is vena contracta okay so vena contracta is the narrowest part of the jet of blood with highest velocity okay so we can see this here so this is the narrow this this is vena contracta because it is the narrowest part of jet of blood so the uh, through which uh, there is the highest velocity of blood it is called vena contracta now we will uh, discuss the um, criteria for severe criteria for severe uh, mitral regurgitation okay so criteria for severe mitral regurg the first criteria that vena contracta we already discussed this that what is the vena contracta so the vena contracta must be high than greater than 0 0.7 cm square so the narrowest part of the blood with the highest velocity will be greater than 0.7 centimeters square the reg regurgent volume the blood which leak from left ventricle to the left atrium rigor is called regurgitate regurgent the regurgitation volume the regurgitation volume will be greater than 60 ml okay per beat okay so this is the second criteria the third criteria will be the regurgitation fraction will be greater than 50 percent okay so this is the third criteria the fourth criteria the regurgitation orifice okay the regurgitation orifice will be more than 0.4 centimeter square okay so this is the criteria for severe my my uh, mitral regurgitation okay so uh, vena contracta will be greater than 0.7 cm square regurgitation volume will be greater than 60 ml per beat the regurgitation fraction will be more than 50 percent and the regurgitation orifice will be more than 0.4 cm square so this is all about the mitral regurgitation we have discussed the causes of mitral regurgitation the uh, exam examination points the uh, auscultatory uh, points and uh, the uh, investigations and the treatment of uh, mitral regurgitation thank you